Some secrets are meant to be kept, and some are meant to be shared. In today's story, one award-winning film is spreading love and light through the secrets of seven women. Welcome to Stories of Hope. I'm Christine Hotchkiss. Each week, I bring you stories that inspire, educate, and give you hope. I want to thank my sponsor and podcast producer, The Motivated Mind Group. Everyone experiences some form of heartbreak or tragedy in their life. Sometimes knowing that you're not alone and that others know exactly what you've been through allows healing to begin. I call it the Me Too Factor. My guests today are from the award-winning film Fortis Femina, where seven women share their individual healing journeys. Thank you for joining me, Betty Ramirez and Coco Gonzalez. I have this big heart about giving hope. And that is what the two of you are doing, as well as the movie Fortis Femina. Because everyone has a story. And with those stories, there comes light from it. There comes hope. Would you agree? Yes. Yes. Betty, I know that you're the creator and the writer for Fortis Femina, the movie, which is outstanding. Not because I'm in it in my story, and so is Coco and a couple of other local ladies, but because it actually has a message of a lot of not-so-happy moments that we do find light and we do find hope. So I want to dive right in and to find out where did you come up with the idea to make seven women's stories that would be anyone else's stories to be something that was a project that you wanted the whole world to see? Um, The reality is I'm very familiar with all those different stories. Sexual abuse, domestic abuse, mental health, um, last, uh, you know, uh, loves. I'm very familiar with all those because be in the medical field for 15 years, I went through so many different scenarios with my patients. So um, I'm, I'm a formal registered nurse. And, um, and besides that, I'm very good to put things together. Um, I discovered the strong point of my body is my mind. Mm. And I like to read people. Mm-hmm. That's what we do when we in the medical field, you know, especially when you have patients they're not able to talk, they're not able to move, you have to read them. And I'm very good to do that. So um, because I'm very familiar with all those subjects, is when I decide it, it's, it, we need to talk about those subjects, even the, sometimes we don't want to do it. You know, some people would say, well, everyone loses a loved one. Everyone deals with mental health. Everyone's had something happen to them. You chose specifically seven women in which four of us are in the community of Chandler. But all of the stories are anybody, anywhere, globally. Why do you feel these stories would make something so different for someone's life versus someone not talking about it? Why does it have to be in a movie? Well, you're talking about this stories is of seven women, right? But it's a story that millions of women have out there. You know, in some point in your life, you're going to lose somebody. In some point in your life, you're going to have a trauma. And in some point in your life, you're going to feel like you don't know what to do. Right? Especially in our society. Absolutely. Um, but when you do something, I think so even like the sexual abuse, mm. it's nothing new. Mm. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a huge thing, but nobody wanna talk. So I'm a little bit different. I think a little bit different. And I'd say it's just a way I can touch so many life. Talking about the stories of seven ladies, I'm going to do that. And that's how I decide to do it. Before we go any further, ladies, I wanna give our viewers a glimpse into the film. Welcome to Fortis Femina Weekend Getaway. Two wonderful ladies have taken a step towards healing. This is my kind of therapy. This is a safe space. What happens here stays here. Who would like to tell their story first? 
You won Miss Arizona? The Miss Arizona? <laughs> yep. But it seems that we all have issues from our past. There was a lot of hostility and fighting in my home. I just felt so lost for so long. I was sexually abused. Sometimes I still think he's behind me. I find myself struggling to be a product of two cultures. My parents want me to have an arranged marriage. What the f I was overlooked. But just be careful what you wish for. Every dream comes with its nightmares. Just because you know what to do doesn't mean it's over. You still have to do it. <laughs> we'll all get through this together. And we'll be stronger for it. You are a leader because you took initiative to put this movie together, seeing what other women could do by changing other people's lives, being on the screen. Sylvia is the individual who played your role that's right. A little more gentle, yes. Yes, I love her voice. <laughs> yes. Nothing like mine. But she does portray you just as how I see you. And that is the message that you're trying to give everyone with every one of our stories. And it wasn't an easy thing. I know that you were one of the writers behind it as well yes. to make sure that our stories were understood and they were going to be seen and received the same way, which will bring me into Coco. Coco, what is your story in this movie that is also your real life? Well, it was part of my story because that's in the past. Correct. And, you know, we all had the story, and sometimes that story is going to define us. But um, uh, And people can be remembered by those stories, right? Mm -hmm. Like, But in that story, I was sex out of use when I was five or six. I don't remember exactly what age I was. And uh, basically, I guess uh, as a child, it was very traumatic because that was away from my mind for so many years. I can tell maybe like 10, 15 years, just little dreams here and there. And then, then one night, like, choop, everything comes like, oh my gosh, and I under understood so many things that, that my dreams was, was having, right? So, yep. That's the story that happened, and like Betty said, uh, any of those seven stories, even different concepts, I guarantee that somebody is gonna feel attached to some of those stories because somehow somebody has that experience, and in my case, was was a bad experience. It's a behavior that you know is it needs to be judged and not forgivable but also is a teaching and a learning for other people that are gonna be listening and watching the story and put attention around their children and the people they care. Um, and my hope is that people is being more aware. Because sometimes also the evil is now in the neighborhoods and the families. And sometimes, you know, we get so busy in life and we don't put the tension. No, we don't. Just like my story, if a lot of people don't know, I um, lost my daughter, Nicole, on New Year's Day 2007. We were in a rollover accident, and uh, she did not survive. And as you already mentioned, Betty, there's going to come a point that we're all going to die. We're also going to encounter losing a loved one. Not everyone's gonna have an encounter of sexual abuse, although we hear it. Not everyone's gonna have an encounter of the other stories that you uh, have written in this wonderful and award-winning, nationally and internationally known film right now. We just came back from Barcelona being recognized because it didn't touch just our community. This touched other communities. And I, I don't have the other individuals here to share their stories, so I'm gonna ask you, Betty, if you would speak on their behalf of what the other characters were so that we can give more of a picture of what this movie is really about and how it's going to touch touch and change the lives of not just the individuals maybe walking the journey, but the people that are involved in those people's lives. One of the other stories is homelessness. Homelessness. Yes, mm -hmm. homelessness. Mm -hmm. and, um, and again, 
um, a minute ago I told you that I'm very familiar with all those subjects mm -hmm. because in one point in my life I ended to be homeless. In one point in my life I ended to asking for money in the streets. Is that right? Yep. <laughs> so now this is something I wasn't aware of. So now that you have said that, because I know in the movie, having acted out my own role as well as Coco did, and Becky, which was the lady who was homeless with two children, I've never heard you talk about being homeless. And I know there's more to just writing this story about our stories. I want you to tell us about your story. You know, um, when you're younger, you know, and you're dumb, it's, it's, you take a, you do a lot of bad decisions. Mm -hmm. In one point in my life, they happen like that. And I ended with a uh, ill husband uh, with no money and he to ask him for money in the street so I can take my husband back home. So um, that one is one of the point in one of the, the stories in, 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 the, in the movie. The other one is how society can put you in a box the things that you need to do for you to accept him. My whole life, if you don't see me, probably you see me on camera. You know, I'm, I'm I guess, 4'10", so I'm short. <laughs> I'm only 98 pounds. <laughs> um, and, um, and most of the time, people say, I mean, are, are you a nurse? I mean, uh, you look like a child. Um, you know, some people say, don't touch me. You, you don't know what to do. You know, you don't know what the things that you need to do. So I, I got a lot about that, right? You know, and I, most of the time I thinking, yes, I know what I'm doing. I want to talk, I want to teach you what I'm doing. Um, but perseverance is, is, the, is, the, is the big thing in any, in any situation. So that one is one. Um, um, the other thing is social media they can put you in a pedestal but at the same time they can smash you in a minute absolutely they can and, and one of the stories is one of our girls they um is part of the you know the, the public eye the public eye mm -hmm. right the other story is about when you come from another country and um and you're trying to fit in the society, you know, especially those of the first generations, mm -hmm. right? So we have it, an Indian girl that she feel like uh, she's an Indian when she's entered her house, and when she's get out of her house, it's a different world because it's America. Mm -hmm. So she struggled with that. Um, so I choose subjects they every day anybody can go through. Not only women, but men too, right? Falling, um, survivor, uh, mental health. I am um, being the medical field. Believe me, I deal with that for 15 years. I think we can all qualify under the whole mental health. Yes, especially ladies. You know, yes. we can get we can get interesting. That's for sure. When you talked about one of the characters, she's a young one, and she's divided with, uh, I believe it's a, thought of to be an arranged marriage as well. That's right. Where her life was going to be told what she was going to do right. by her culture. But I also know with both you and Coco that you're not from America. And so you had your own struggles, and then you have those stories that come with you. Do you want to elaborate more about how you had to struggle with not only just the sexual abuse at such a young age, but now you've come to a different culture that, um, as Betty already mentioned, social media, it'll make you or break you, and everyone will judge you no matter what. Right, and especially when you are coming, uh, you know, I'm coming from Mexico, and we know a lot of people is crossing the border, so it's already uh, like something like, oh my gosh, what are you doing here, and things like that, right? And then you need to learn the language, and trying to you know say some specific words and things like that, and I I believe that when you prepare yourself and you really know who you are, and no matter what kind of test you had in life, um, and no matter what other people say, because always people is going to be talking good or bad. I mean, you cannot, and you are in, in social media and all that kind of stuff. You cannot stop that 
But you always can stop. What do you say? What do you do? And you know, th- who, everybody's watching. And then, you know, with the example, like Betty is talking about how she feels uh, when she was doing the nursing job. I worked in the jeans for almost 18 years. So I had different type of patients, uh, pe- people that wants to lose weight, they want to look good, that uh, they want to change, create new, new habits. Uh, when I'm teaching the classes, I need to l- feel the class and how they're exhausted or, or who is going to have almost a heart attack and it's like a stop. So when you give yourself to the community, that helps to heal your heart because now you have the motivation and then your family comes, your child, your kids, grandkids. And I think that's um, the cave or the compensation that God brings in life when you are able to serve and time heals. In my case, because I don't remember, I guess God blessed me with that, but you know how many women or men, they remember that moment, right? And I always tell people time heals and when you concentrate and do positive things, that's gonna go, know that you're not gonna forget However, it's going to put you in different place and just embrace yourself around good people. A couple of other stories that are in Fortis Femina, because um, you have a, a, a definite age of a variety of ages. You know, yes. I think the youngest one is what, 22? 22. And she was the one with the arrangement. Actually, 23. 23, still young. And then the oldest would not be the person who played Betty, but... Oh, I'm you 61. Ha- I don't have any problem to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud about my age, too, because it gives us um, an understanding about life. You know, right. she's she was the youngest there and learned a lot from us just being on set, learning how to deal with the things that we dealt with. We went through a lot of emotions, not just as actresses or the ones that were actresses. It really brought us, I think, together as well. Um, on a personal level, not just on the big screen and what kind of message that we were going to give everyone or how it was going to be received. One of the other ladies that's in this uh, movie is, she's a public eye. And in the public eye, we talked about social media and accepting ourselves and the differences that we have to go through is who's watching you all the time, right? Yes. Um, And that character is Mariella. Uh, Mariella, you want to tell more about her? You know, uh, again, she's she's Latina too. Mm-hmm. So she come to this country. Um, again, she don't have it any families. Mm-hmm. Um, she lost her mother. Mm-hmm. Um, she have it a very difficult life. Be a child, uh, a couple, they complete different worlds. So one is Muslim and the other one is Catholic. Mm-hmm. So um, her only support through her childhood is a dog. So she loves dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, so she had a very um, bad experience with somebody stabbing her. And after that, she's not able to have kids. So pretty much she's with no hope to kids, uh, means not family, right. and, um, and lost her mother. So mm-hmm. she's went through very difficult times. And believe me, so many women going like that too. As women, I'm not going to say this isn't for men, but because I'm a woman and we're speaking about a woman's film, there are so many things that are spotlighted on us or we're judged for. And there's so much that we do for a community but don't always get recognized for. And another one of the stories is a lady, and we've heard about little girls who are in pageants. Oh, I want her to be so pretty and be in a pageant. And that's actually good and bad. I've been in pageants, but I did it for a different reason. I needed to gain self-confidence, and not a lot of people know that about more than just the one that everyone knows me from my story. And a pageant could actually make you or break you as well. I did it to gain self-confidence. I had none. And one of the characters in here is a pageant queen, where she struggled. I think so, beauty pageants. Um get the attraction for a lot of girls, they don't have a self-esteem, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Um, but I think so everybody going through this, fake it until you make it, mm-hmm. right? What you see is not what the real deal. And unfortunately with her, 
um, she struggled a lot in her personal life um, and you know with family with mental health and, um, and she struggled a lot to uh, be sure who she is so the only way she can feel better is when somebody say you are beautiful you are so good oh my gosh you're the queen and they happen to a lot of ladies not only the beauty queens mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately it's only for a little bit exactly. because when you go behind doors things change for every single human being absolutely I, I want to say this it, when we went to Barcelona I experienced something very different here in Arizona, here in Chandler, we do a special screen in the Look Cinema um, Theater. And we have uh, like 350 people. And a lot of ladies, they express, you know, how they feel. When we went to Barcelona, a lot of guys. I agree with you. Come to us and say, wow, yes. this is my mother, my sister. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow. Okay, what's, what happened here, right? Mm -hmm. Because I expected maybe the ladies are going to be a little bit more to come to us, mm -hmm. but the guys. And um, in all those different stories for women, they they happen to men stay too. Yes, they do, just men don't talk about it. Or, the, or society doesn't think that it's acceptable to say men go through sexual abuse, men right. are homeless, men lose children. You know, men are on the spotlight and then yes. they're knocked down. So yeah, we all have the same things going on just at different times. That's right. My experience like you is like, I wanted to enjoy this moment to say, how are we really touching each of these stories with each community that is not what we're familiar with? And it has to do with different cultures. And that is something I experienced as well. Yes, because I wanted, I want to portray in the movie it's not only United States. Mm -mm. There's not only the Latinos. Mm -mm. It's everybody. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have it in the movie, African Americans, Latinos, and Americans, and, and Indian. So because no matter where you're from, no matter the language that you speak, the color of your skin or whoever you are, everybody in one point in their life is going to touch by any of those subjects. Absolutely agree with you, every single one of them. Coco, what would you like to share with everyone, um, your experience as far as, yes, it's in the past, but if someone came to you and said, I had this happen to me, and they never saw the movie or even knew the movie existed, we're just going to be as a regular person in society, how would you go about helping someone through that? Well, first of all, I would say, you know, I have somebody with the same similar experience that you have. You want to hear? Mm. And you know, this is what uh, this person did. I would say, you know, you are not lonely. There is a group that can support you. I'm here also to support that. And when you talk about it and you don't keep it inside, you are not only helping yourself, but you are helping somebody else. Because you mentioned a lot of people get quiet, mm -hmm. and and probably is what happened in Spain. Because Spain is a very open, you know, different environment. Mm -hmm. There are more freedom, mm -hmm. and probably is why the guys kind of talk to. And here in America, it's always like conservatives, and to get an appearance. But I would say just share it and get a support, get a group, and. But don't, don't be quiet and get busy and prepare yourself. I think the more you prepare yourself, more strain you find in yourself like, okay, that was just experience, a challenge, but look who I am now, right? Betty, with regards to knowing a little bit about you now <laughs> and understanding why you chose the stories that you did, how would you help anyone else if they never knew about a movie being made? Well, I, I guess all the first thing I'm going to say is you're not alone, right? Uh, believe me, people like you is all over the all over the place, all over the world. The first thing that we need to learn in is to speak up and say what what with her, the things they hurt us. 
the things they make us uncomfortable. And then looking for some some help because it's a lot of help up there. We need to just go up there and try to reach. I know, you know, sometimes you don't want to say, I must, somebody has sexual abuse me because like Coco say, it's, 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 it's something that you're not going to say because otherwise, what are they going to think about you? Right. Be brave, no matter what happened to you. Be brave and looking for somebody they can, they can hear you. Look for some place they can help you. And the, the most important thing is grab your faith, whatever you have it. Christian, whatever, whatever you are, grab that. Because that is the only thing they can keep you afloat. We're here to share a good news. It's a tragedy, yes, but you have to be a conqueror, no matter what. And then in the end of the tunnel, it's a light. Betty, thank you for giving myself the opportunity to portray my own story. Um, and I'm actually going to correct it. It's not my story. I was affected by the passing of my daughter. It's my daughter's story. So in a way, it is in the past, but it's not, because I was affected by the loss of my daughter, that helps other parents and other individuals be able to find hope, move forward, and not feel stuck or feel that they're alone, which I absolutely felt that I was, which is why I founded Stories of Hope, is because I felt that I was alone. I didn't want anyone to feel that way. And that's what you've brought to this movie, bringing in Coco, bringing in the characters that you had come in to portray the individuals that weren't able to do their own story and Becky as well and so I want to say thank you for giving the opportunity that this isn't just about a film this is truly about a message helping others know that there's another way there are resources and they are not alone so thank you this inspiring story was brought to you by MMG your global creative agency based right here in downtown Chandler 